what I'm going to do is kind of give you a complete overview on canvases. Um, just because it is kind of important to realize that because the canvas is the thing that you paint your paintings on and a lot of students cut corners. Now most of you don't, you've all experienced quality canvases, but there's still a few of you that think buying six of them at Michael's is a good deal. Okay. Um, a little bit about canvases. Um, back in the day, canvases were an art form that they made um, really importance to. The canvas ground, the, the, the thing that the, you painted your painting on was really cherished. And early on in canvases, um, the reason why canvases were originally made is that in the olden times, they did most of their paintings on boards. So like the Mona Lisa is painted on a board. Um, the issue with that is when you take a board and you make it very large, it doesn't hang easily. It's not very mobile. Um, so consequently, when you get into larger sizes, that's when it's important to go to a canvas. Outside of that, your smaller canvases oftentimes may be better off if you worked on boards that are properly uh, prepared. Um, there's a certain point where artists work anything smaller than a 9 by 12, they tend to go onto boards. Um, anything bigger, they go onto canvases just because it's lighter weight with the frame and it's easy to hang. You know, it's part of it's practical. When you get into large canvases, oftentimes uh, if you have to ship them, the, the canvases actually come off the boards. And that's why it's important to, to realize that. And not all artists work on canvases that are atta uh, attached to a wood frame. A lot of artists will glue or tape, uh, well, they'll glue a canvas onto a board, or they'll tape a canvas onto a, a piece of cardboard or a construction board, and they'll paint on that. Um, Sargent was known to paint on a flat surface and then when he was done, he would crop the painting down to what suited him. And if most of you who have Photoshop, almost all the time, that when you are laying out your photographs, what's the first tool you, you use? You crop. And usually when you do, you get a better composition. And you have more freedom. And you think, wow, I really took a good picture out there. I knew where my central focal point is. I knew where my my interest point is, I put it compositionally correct, but then when you all of a sudden take another look at it, you go, you know, I don't need this down here and I don't need this over here, so you tend to crop it down, and all of a sudden you kind of move it around so that the central focal point is where you want it, like in the golden mean or something. So cropping is, is awesome. But when you buy a canvas and start painting on it, you pretty much don't get an opportunity to crop it because it's attached to boards and it's much too complicated to do that. So what a lot of artists do is they don't even paint on canvases that are on boards. They tape their canvas to uh, cardboard and then they paint on that. And then when they go to frame it, they'll take um, two large pieces of cardboard that are white and they'll move them around to find out where the best cropping spot is. They'll take a pencil line and they'll mark it and either they or the framer will re-stretch the painting onto board, onto a canvas board, or they'll put it directly onto a board, which I don't recommend. Um, you definitely want to have it back onto the bars. If That's, you, huh? If, if you stretch after you've painted, though, won't you crack the surface? <coughs> well, you're, you're going to crack the surface of where, where, but you've made a better choice on the painting. So artists like Richard Schmidt, they'll, they'll say, you know, it's like, let's say if you have a 12 by 16 um, canvas size, if he painted it, uh, you know, 20 by 30 and, you know, moved his things around and realized that uh, 12 by 16 isn't quite good enough, it might be 12 by 16 and three quarters might be better, then that's where they end up putting the line and cropping it. And then they'll get bars that are cut exactly to that measurement have them frame, uh, have them stretched onto that measurement and then have a custom frame made for it. 
So what you're talking about is expense on top of expense on top of expense. It's a very expensive way to go. It's very convenient as far as storing your paintings because you can store a lot of canvas sheets on top of each other. So it's a good way to have storage for canvases, but hopefully you're all selling your works so much. But it is much more complicated. So the standard way that we work uh, as artists is that we go down and buy them. And we think, well, if I go to Michael's and buy them, it's not a big deal. I'll get six of them for a dollar and come home with them. Back in the day, yeah, you could possibly have gotten away with that. But canvases are a commodity like anything else. And right now it's about the cheapest overall. And you don't want to skimp on the surface that you paint. In fact, I would say that the surface of your paint, painting becomes the way that you paint and becomes the end result of your painting. Most people don't want to go to the expense up front to getting a quality canvas. And they never realize how good their paintings would actually be. The canvas makes a, a huge amount of difference in the overall quality, the overall consistency of the paint on the canvas, the overall effect, and it's more enjoyable to paint on. Which most of you that have used like the Masterpiece um, oil prime canvases would agree. How many of you have not used <coughs> the oil prime canvases? Okay, so you have no idea what you're missing. Mm -hmm. And once you do, you go, wow. You know, it really makes a huge difference. Um, the first thing about low budget, high budget, why certain canvases are better than others. Originally, the bars and back are there to support your canvas. The problem, though, is that the bars are one of the most expensive part of the canvas itself. <coughs> And so what companies have done now is that these bars are becoming smaller and smaller. And consequently, they become narrower. You know, so a lot of these are done in China now. And so they have to get them on a boat. <laughs> so they cut down the space in here. They could get two, two bars instead of one by cutting them in half. So you're getting a product that's really munched down in here. Now the, the bars support the canvas. But the problem is, is that the canvas, because it's flexible, um, also hit the bars, okay? And if your canvas isn't routed right, you'll get this edge of the, the painting hitting the back of the bar. And consequently, that bleeds through. So it's not really desirable, nor is the way that this is actually attached. Canvas companies have gone to this because a machine can actually put this little rubber thing in here to hold the canvas in there. But what if you want to unstretch your bars, unstretch your canvas and restretch them again? You have no way of doing that with these. These are not really um, designed for that. They're designed basically as a one-time thing. Also, look at how narrow these are. When these canvases are, are stretched, and oftentimes when you go to a size like this and the weather starts to change or any humidity changes, the, this in here will sometimes actually pull. And I've had canvases on very small pieces that the canvases, act, the bars have actually broken on, the, on these. So, what, and it might be the very best painting you have ever painted and the canvas itself is, is limiting its life. The way that canvases originally were created is that you had a piece of material. And the piece of material in back usually was a linen or a cotton. And this material that's on the canvas itself um, is very similar to like sheet material. If you go down to Macy's and you buy sheets, you want to look for what? High thread count, High thread count mm -hmm. right? Well, when you look at a piece of material that is uh, low thread count, what makes you automatically say? It's going to fall apart. It's going to rot. It's cheap. Huh? And it's going to be very, very rough to your body, right? Well, canvases that are made in other countries, not necessarily for the artist's convenience, but for their making profit, use the very cheapest canvas that you could possibly use. 
So the canvas itself that you're buying for a discount is a very low grade canvas that has a very rough that you wouldn't yourself even buy to, to sleep on. And yet you're producing masterpiece canvas, uh, masterpieces on canvases that literally are going to pull themselves apart over a short period of time. A lot of really great paintings have been lost because the canvas selection was very, very poor. Um, then in the olden days, the gessos and, and the oil priming that they would use, they would need to have a surface that was in between the canvas itself and the ground or the, the finish. Nowadays we use a, a gesso to finish canvases. And most companies, even fine uh, companies, use gesso. But gesso that they use now, it's not the same gesso that they used to use. Back in the day, the old gessos used to be rabbit skin glue and marble dust um, with white pigment. And the reason why they had rabbit skin glue is that it was very flexible. And the finish was like alabaster. Gesso nowadays is latex, basically. And you can paint that on and it dries very fast. If you paint it on the, on the unprimed canvas itself, the canvas itself would rot. So you need to have a layer of product between the paint and the canvas itself. And nowadays we use gesso. Um, back in the day they would put a layer of rabbit skin glue and um, marble dust for their gesso and then they would prime the canvas on top of that. And then now you can get canvases that are primed with um, gesso, with regular gesso, or you can get them oil primed, which is the old master's way of using. There are not very many companies that uh, create oil primed canvases. The one that I like the best is Masterpiece, as well you all know. And I just want to take this off. No, they come that way. You're not gessoing. You could put gesso on top of your canvases. Canvas right here has gesso. It has one coat of gesso. Okay. okay, and that's another thing that cheaper companies do is that they'll put one coat on because they figure, oh well, you know, if you're buying canvases at Michaels, um, you're, you can add more gesso to the canvases. Um, so this is a masterpiece canvas, and some of you are used to working with masterpiece. Um, and I love masterpiece canvases. But uh, one thing that a lot of people, you know, with all of this packaging, a lot of people uh, throw this away. And what's really great about masterpiece, they, I think what happened with masterpiece is that they go, okay, we can't compete with the, the canvases that are coming out of China. You know, they're just, so we're just not going to even bother anymore. We're going to produce a product that is so high end that our competitors couldn't even dream of, of competing with this because it's just not cost effective. Masterpiece Canvas is a company that's in the United States and they really are proud that they make their canvases by hand. Um, and they do really cool things. This is one little insert that comes in the canvas here and this is removable and it's a refrigerator magnet and a lot of you have thrown these away and I dig them out and I put them on my own refrigerator. But these are usually quotes by artists. And like I say, they're on a magnet. And this one here says, the beginning is the most important part of the work. And that's by Plato. And oftentimes when I notice students jumping in and doing stuff, I'll have like four or five of these around. And I'll just walk by and I'll place <coughs> this on their, on their palette when they're starting something and they're in such a hurry to get started. Here, I'll give this one to you. <laughs> Because <laughs> we were talking about how to start a painting. Okay, um, so those are those are awesome to collect. But let's. This is an oil prime canvas. This is about the Rolls Royce of what you actually get. Now I want to sh kind of show you the difference in wood structure. Uh, what Masterpiece has done. This is an oil prime ca uh, linen canvas, which you can tell. And basically, my theory of canvases when you're going out buying canvases, the darker the back, the better the quality. Okay, so like really good cotton tends to be darker than really white bleach cotton. And stay away from nylon canvases. Why they were ever invented, I have no idea. If you want to know how well ni nylon holds up, pull up your old stockings and see how flimsy and stretched out they look after a while. Nylon's not a good product to work on. 
nor is it traditional. And I can walk into a gallery and see a nylon canvas. I mean, it, at the end product, it's just, ugh. There's a whole group of artists out there that are just, oh, nylon's the best. No, it's not. <laughs> You'll never get an old quality on a, on a nylon canvas. So the darker the canvas, the better. This is linen, and same thing with linen. The darker the linen, the higher the thread count. So it's just one thing that, that is really cool to look at. And then, even on their small canvases, they have these, these bars here. Now remember how I told you that these tend to start stretching and get out of, out of whack? These are placed in, even in their smaller canvases, to help prevent the shrinking of the canvas. Um, and not only just once, but twice. And they're routed um, beautifully and they're set in here. A lot of companies, what they do is they staple them in. Masterpiece is actually routed and put in um, uh, mortise and tenons so that these will not go anywhere, nor do these move like with the stapled ones, um, you know, with just a little bit of pressure. Uh, what I found really fascinating with the Masterpiece canvas is the deep routing. Look at how far. See how the canvas in here bumps up against, it bumps up against the um, canvas here? Look at how deep these are. Now a lot of companies that do put the stretcher bars in, like I say, they staple them in. Uh, the, uh, this bar here oftentimes will bleed through onto here. And if you notice how deep this bar is from here, this won't, no matter how you push on this, these will never touch the outside bars. So you never have a problem with that. I've got a painting at home that I painted. And I painted it beautifully, wonderful. It just, I couldn't, it was perfect. And it was not on a masterpiece canvas. It had a bar across that had stapled in. But no, it still held together. And it was large, it's a 30 by 40, 40 by 50, big, big piece. But what happened over the years, as the painting went from house to galleries, is that people would oftentimes wash the canvas with, with you know, damp cloth as they dust. And every time they would do that, they would push the canvas onto the bar. And now, when you look at the painting, you can see the bars bleeding through on the canvas because of the action of them wiping the canvas. So even if you get away with painting on a canvas without having bar, uh, you know, the masterpiece bars in them. Because the bars keep touching the painting, the person unknowing keeps wiping, the, the bars will start bleeding to the front of the canvas and the canvas will actually start. So, um, so that's one thing that you want to really make sure is that the bars are really offset so that doesn't happen. Um, also, uh, masterpiece canvas has put in keys in the corners. Now a lot of people want to know why these are in. And these are placed in so that when the canvas sometimes will uh, bow a little bit, you can push these in tighter and it causes the bars to separate a little bit and pull, this, pull the canvas apart. This is old technology. If you look at paintings that were done 300 years ago, they use this technology um, that you can constantly tighten your canvas by pushing the bars apart. Um, and so these are really awesome. Masterpiece is the only one that actually not only supplies them, but actually has them in before you buy them. And what's really awesome about Masterpiece Canvas is that as they get bigger, they start having these keys in here too. And so you can even tighten the center sections with them. So they're really great. One of the awesome thing about Masterpiece Canvases too is if you notice the staples in back, they've given you a lot of options so that if you want to unstaple this and, pu and put it away off the bars or roll it up, when you go to restretch it, you have a lot of canvas here for your pliers to hold on to, which you don't have on these canvases, mm -hmm. to actually be able to put it back onto the bars. And one awesome thing about Masterpiece canvases is that they're the tightest canvas on the market. They pride themselves and getting a drum-like surface. There's no wimpy, wimpy, floppy canvases in their thing. They, they work a try. So Masterpiece Canvas is definitely a leading canvas that's out there. Not all the stores have them, um, but you want to make sure that you can get your hands on them at your store, so let them know that 
um, you should have them. Any questions? Just one for when you're stacking them, sometimes if I place them face to face, of course they stuck. Mm -hmm. If you paste some wood to canvas, they'll stick. How do you, what do you, do you put a barrier between your paintings when you're storing them and do you store them on edge rather, rather than flat? Uh, wax paper. Mm. I just put sheets of wax paper in. Just, uh, just off the roll? And yeah, and just gives, just gives a barrier. yeah, barriers. So if you have varnishes that stick together. But do you, do you store them face to face or, or, or would? What no, I would, I, I would put the, I wouldn't put them face to face. I would put a, ca a canvas wax paper and then the back of the canvas with the painting on top wax paper, back of the canvas, just to kind of separate the barriers. You could use cardboard too. Um, no, no. The problems with cardboard is that it's probably not um, archival, and you probably don't want to s store them for a long period of time. Yeah, the, uh, I don't know about that, but we can we can get into that. But um, so anyway, so oil prime canvases on linen, your best bet to go. If you've never used oil prime canvases, once you use them and you go back to the regular store bought Michaels canvases you will never go and use them again. I mean, they're, it's like night and day, yeah. Your brushes last longer too, because the surface is smoother, so you're not wearing down your brushes. Yeah, so you save money on, on brushes, especially if you're using sable brushes. Your, paint, your paints go on smoother. Uh, the surface of these cheaper canvases are like sandpaper, mm -hmm. and you can just feel the difference. This is like silk, you know. The, another awesome thing about this, this is not one single prime. This has several coats of primer on it, so the, the canvas texture doesn't come through at the very end. Um, but what's really awesome about canvases that are primed this much is the effect of the oils. Because when you have a ground like this, and you mix oils and mediums into your paints, the first thing that happens is that all that oil is sucked up into the gesso and into the canvas. And when you have one layer of gesso, the canvas literally is still so porous that any effect that you're trying to get out of your mediums immediately sucks into the canvas. These canvases are so well sealed that when you start putting oils on top of this, the oils stay. And they stay so that the oils can illuminate the canvas and give you a real beautiful um, uh, effect with your mediums. So it's really, it really is a different way of painting. Some of, some artists are a little bit, when they start getting it, they're a little intimidated by the, the, the cost and they're intimidated by um, the surface itself. You do have to practice it a little bit to get used to it. But once you do, the effects that you get on these canvases far outweigh the expense. Not to mention the archival part. And they look so cool. I mean, if I were to buy a $40,000 painting from a gallery, would I want it to look like this? Or would I want it to look like this? You know? And a lot of people are wondering, why am I not getting a lot of money for my artwork? Well, probably because your artwork kind of looks like you just picked up something at Michael's. This looks like an investor looks at it and goes, oh, this is an artist that definitely knows what they're doing. This is a high-end product. If you start off with a high-end product, you'll end up with a high-end product. Okay? Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah. So what would something like that particular one cost? Um, it depends on the store. You can get these oftentimes on sale. Um, this runs, do you remember what these run? $40, $50, somewhere like that. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like, it's like, yeah, canvases are a certain price. And then double that, and you're into the linen. And then double that, and you're into the oil prime linen. So they're definitely quantum leaps. But the end result is a quantum leap in the quality of your work. Uh, and if you want your work to look different than everyone else's work in a gallery, the canvas would be a good place to start because these canvas illuminate more uh, because the oils sit on top. There's a better overall sheen with the quality. The luminous quality of this is like looking at the difference of latex and lacquer paint. You know, a latex wall as opposed to a lacquer wall, what looks more luminous because it reflects light? These canvases cause your paintings to become more luminous. Okay?